This is New Cab News with Lauren Pollan. Good evening and thanks for joining us. A big time for the AJHL uh, last couple days to make some moves and I hear the Bobcats picked up a couple players. Yeah, they picked up a pair of D-men. We'll have more on that. Plus, they're playing their first home game 2012. How exciting. They're taking on the Cameros Kodiaks. Again, we'll have a preview for that in sports. Exciting. People should go out if they get the chance. Definitely. And uh, Gerard, I, I didn't appreciate the weather today. No. The wind was chilly, <laughs> but I mean, it is winter, like we were saying. Well, it, it looked pretty earlier on, <laughs> mind you, even with that wind chill. So it was nice to look at, but uh, the clouds have rolled in in the middle <laughs> of the afternoon. So yeah, it's been difficult. Let's, let's have a look here. All righty, overcast conditions. What's greeting us at the moment? We seeing our highest temperature for the day, mind you, that minus 10. And uh, the wind chill, however, as Lauren hinted at again, was pretty mean during the course of the day, right across the region. We went from the late minus 20s, minus 28 in our area, into the minus teens. The highs that wind chill got across the region must have been like about a minus 15 in the Battlefords. And as we compare it now, yep, the clouds have built on up and with Coal Lake and area running a 30% chance of some flurries later on in the evening, maybe on the after midnights. But we've got some details and all of that coming up a little later in the show. A Cold Lake Air Force employee is facing multiple sexual abuse and child porn charges, and the alleged victim is a member of his own family. RCMP initially received a tip from a Swift Current resident saying they received child porn images from the suspect. The Cold Lake man appeared in court yesterday. His next court appearance is January 25th. Police are not releasing the suspect's name to protect the identity of the child victim. A judge has sentenced a man to four years in prison for a fatal beating outside a Meadow Lake bar. The sen sentence was handed down yesterday in a Battleford courtroom after Kyle Villeneuve pleaded guilty to manslaughter in the death of Joey Morasti. Court heard the 43-year-old victim died in a Saskatoon hospital in 2008, several days after Villeneuve got into a fight with him outside a Meadow Lake bar. Villeneuve faces a 10-year ban on owning or possessing firearms upon his release. RCMP are asking for your help in locating a missing 13-year-old. 13-year-old Haley Desjardins has not been seen or heard from since last Monday. Police suspect she is staying with friends in the Red Pheasant First Nation. Desjardins is described as 5 foot 7, approximately 150 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes. She is most likely wearing jeans and a hoodie. Anyone with information about her whereabouts is urged to contact the Unity RCMP. There may soon be sweeping changes to Alberta's school system. The province has created a 10-point to-do list based on public consultations across Alberta. As Emmett Murphy explains, many of these changes are currently being discussed for Lloyd Minster schools. Education Minister Thomas Lukasik is creating some lofty goals for Alberta schools. One of his most supported ideas is updating school designs to better support communities. I know from our perspective we're looking at partnerships with health and other agencies where our students can be better served and certainly when you have children in a neighborhood, having a nurse or health service available in the community really makes it convenient. In Lloydminster we're always looking at our, our growth as a reason to look at more capital expansion. So that one could really become a major piece of our capital plan in the next uh, three to five years. Both the Lloydminster Public and Catholic School Divisions agree that in addition to the new school designs, placing a greater emphasis on young children is a high priority. By looking at a full-time kindergarten program and, and then offsetting some of the challenges around travel, I think would be, I, I think those two pieces together really provide a real benefit for kids, particularly at the kindergarten level. It's something that we would strongly endorse is movement towards full-day kindergarten. Uh, we have spoken to both provinces about uh, adding that type of programming and that would be a, a very exciting venture. Diachuk says the education minister has to be commended for acting so quickly after his public meetings, especially since the projects may take years and millions of dollars to complete. We were excited about the potential to engage in very formal discussions now with the ministry about these. But there's a price tag to it and the fact that they have the resources to take them on, uh, again sort of just sort of reaffirms that whole process where Alberta and Saskatchewan are leading the country. Emmett Murphy, New Camp News. Alberta landowners are getting the chance to meet face-to-face -face with the Property Rights Task Force, a creation of the PC Party last month. 
As Clayton Brown explains, the task force is to help the government better understand Albertans' concerns with property rights. St. Paul was the third stop for the task force. The community sessions are in direct response to the backlash the PCs received last year over Bills 19, 36 and 50. There's a number of ministers and MLAs on the task force to show the importance and the significance of property rights to the Premier and to our government and our, the importance that we want to come out and to listen and to hear um, what Albertans have to say and solutions they want to present. Landowners from throughout the Lakeland region attended the sessions. Many felt the consultations were useful, but some have mixed emotions with the process. Whether or not they truly listen, um, I think the, the elected representatives are here surely did because they've acknowledged that the issue won't be now if they can direct the bureaucrats to take heed to it. The consultation should have been done before the atrocious bill of legislation was passed. McQueen says all the information from the consultation will be compiled into a report which will be made public and studied very closely. Look at the, the, what we've heard from um, landowners um, with regards to the issues and the solutions. Take some time to look at that and then take the next steps. And so we'll be working through those as we move forward. The last consultation will be January 17th in Lethbridge and the report will be completed by the end of the month. In St. Paul, Clayton Brown, Newcap News. The Salvation Army wants to thank the region for its, its success over the 2011 Christmas season. This year, over 500 kids received toys and other gifts, along with over 300 families enjoying food hampers. Jackie Drearden from the Salvation Army says the spirit was definitely in the air. It's always been good, but this year, I don't know, people were just in such a good mood and a happy mood and a giving mood. and. Even people that were working the hearts out in here were doing it with a smile on the face. Jackie encourages anyone who wants to take part to apply next year. One of my biggest concerns is that maybe some people didn't come and apply because they didn't, they thought they didn't qualify or the, they just don't want to ask and they figure that there's others worse off than them. But.